In this video, I want to talk about the work that goes into your typical boundary survey. And it's going to be a short video. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail. This isn't a, a technical video to teach surveyors how to do their job. It's part of a series of videos I'm trying to do that explain why boundary surveys cost what they do, why you can't do a good boundary survey for a few hundred dollars. And part of helping people to understand why boundary surveys are expensive, because they are, they're expensive. Um, part of helping people understand why they cost as much as they do is, is helping people to understand the level of effort that goes into a good boundary survey, a typical boundary survey. So what I want to do today is, in this short video is talk about the six things, maybe seven things that need to happen in order for me to properly execute a boundary survey. So I'm going to go ahead and, and run through those seven steps. And I wrote them down here so I didn't forget. So if I'm, if I'm looking off to the right, you know why. So the very first thing I need to do is I need to do some project planning and contract admin. And I'm going to do a separate video that talks about what's involved in that uh, because you as a client and as a, as a project manager potentially a project owner should should be having a conversation with your surveyor before he starts work and he should be asking you some questions. So there's a there's that whole component of project planning, finding out what you need as a client, what you're trying to do, what we're trying to survey and how I can meet your needs. That all needs to happen. I need to prepare a proposal, which is usually a scope of services and a fee estimate. And then I need to get you under contract. We need to execute a written contract. Once that's done, then I can actually start the work of doing the boundary survey. So Step one is kind of that project planning contract admin. Step two is uh, land records research. So I need to go in and do all kinds of records research before I even can set foot on your piece of property, the property that's being surveyed. So what kind of records am I pulling? I'm looking at all the uh, filed survey maps in your neighborhood. I'm looking at your vesting deed. I'm looking at all your neighbor's vesting deeds. I'm looking at all the tax assessor maps. Uh, I'm looking at... Um, Right-of-way surveys, if you're on a state highway, I might be checking with the city or utility companies for information they might have. So, uh, for example, in the California Central Valley, a lot of times we're up against an irrigation canal. I got to get those records. Uh, potentially, if you're up against a railroad, I got to see if there's rail, uh, records on the railroad right away. So there's all kinds of different places I might have to go look for information. But at a minimum, I need to be checking the deeds and the filed survey maps. So I got to collect all that information together, not just for your parcel, but for your neighbors and, and for some other parcels in the neighborhood, potentially. Okay. Then I go to step three, which is I got to review those records. So as a licensed land surveyor, I'm looking at each one of those records very carefully, and I'm trying to figure out how might this potentially impact the location of the parcel boundaries. All those written records and maps are evidence of your boundaries location. So I'm going in, I'm looking at each document, and I'm figuring out, how might this have an impact on the boundary resolution? And I'm also trying to look at what, what information might I need to collect in the field so that I can use this document or this information on this, this map or this document when I'm ready to come in and do my boundary resolution. So there's a whole record review process that we go through. Then finally, we're ready to go out and do our actual field survey, which is what most people think they're paying for when they pay for a boundary survey. So, that's kind of a three-step process. There's preparing for the survey. So we have exhibits that we prepare, instructions that we prepare for our field field crews. Those are different on every survey, potentially. Um, so we, we've got this whole process that we go through to prepare what we call field package. At least here at my company, we do that. Then we actually go out and execute the survey. So we're out on the ground. That's when most people see us. Then when the field survey is done, we come back in for step three, and that is we download that data. It has to be processed in special software. We make some adjustments to it typically to get rid of some error. And then we're exporting that measurement information in a format that we can use usually in, in a program like AutoCAD. That brings us to the fifth step, which is when we actually go in and resolve your boundary, your parcel boundaries. So I call that boundary resolution. In essence, every boundary survey is a puzzle. It's a puzzle that we're trying to put together with all the pieces. So we're going in, I'm, uh, I'm analyzing measurements, I'm comparing how one set of measurements fits with another, I'm uh, comparing how my modern measurements fit with historical measurements, I'm evaluating evidence, fences, walls, property corner monuments that were set to mark the boundaries. I'm taking a look at the way the property is being used, and I'm asking myself if there's any, any, any unauthorized use of the property or unwritten rights that might have developed, and then I'm making some professional judgments there. When we're done with that process, we typically have a line or set of lines 
that represent your parcel boundary in AutoCAD if we're able to do that, if we're able to successfully resolve the boundary. Okay, we haven't even started putting together the actual thing that you hired us to do, which is typically some type of work product. So that could be a survey map. Maybe we're going to set your monuments and file a map with the county. It could be a land title survey that's going to go to a lender. Um, it could be uh, you need us to write a land description for an easement, a new easement that's, for, that's going to cross your property or maybe it's going to cross your neighbor's property. Um, so all those first six steps or five steps, all that work, just gets me to the point where I can actually prepare the product that you need, which is the last step, the seventh step, which is preparing the work product. Typically, that work product is a map and some kind of technical report, technical report that we that we either provide directly to the client or we provide to a partner, business partner like an architect or a civil engineer or an appraiser or a or land title officer. So, hopefully, you can see from that brief description, there's a huge amount of work there. That's not something we do in a day. It's not something we do in a few hours, usually not something we do in, in a couple days. In fact, on the field survey portion, usually almost always we need to make two trips. So we make our initial trip out to the field, we try and find available evidence, and then usually we have to go back after we've looked at some of that evidence. We go back, we've kind of refined our, our information, we've got some more accurate search coordinates for property corner monuments. Then we go back and look, look a second time. For the stuff that we didn't find the first time because we really got to make sure that we didn't miss anything. And so as a general rule, every boundary survey that we do here at Reed Plant Horizons is at least two days in the field unless we find all your monuments on the first trip, which doesn't happen very often. And it's at least a couple days of work in the office. So every boundary survey we do, three to four days worth of work at a minimum. And there could be boundary surveys we do that are weeks of work or months of work. I had some guys that wanted me to survey a 10,000 acre ranch in central California up in the coastal range. And uh, I told him, I was like, I, if you gave me 10 men and a mule team, it'd still take me six months. It was just, it was a huge survey. So a lot of work, not something that's done quickly. You have to be very meticulous and very careful. And that's why you can't do it for a few hundred dollars. That's why it costs what it costs. That's why boundary surveyors are not, boundary surveys are not cheap. And I, and I don't pretend they are. They're very expensive. They're a huge investment. They probably cost more than your appraisal. They probably cost more than your inspection. They might even cost as much as your uh, land, as your uh, the due diligence services that you're getting from your land attorney. They're almost certainly more expensive than the title insurance you're paying for. So boundary surveyors are boundary surveyors are expensive, and boundary surveys are expensive. And there's a reason why. There's a lot of work that goes into doing a good boundary survey. So thanks for watching, guys, and I, I hope you catch my other videos that talk a little bit about why surveys cost what they cost.